Welcome to another Adventure Widely video. Uh, today we're talking about packing up a kid's backpack and what you should put into it for the different ages that they are. Uh, I have my wonderful daughter here next to me. Uh, she is 10 years old and has been backpacking with me since she was six. So what, you, what can you tell me about what you enjoy about backpacking? I like spending time with you. Aww. I like looking at the stars before I go to bed. And I like sleeping in something outside. Something outside? So do you have to, does it have to be a tent? Or can you just throw your back or your sleeping bag on the ground and call that good? I don't really want to be exposed, so a tent. You prefer the tent? OK. Can you get me the uh, backpack you used to use when you were six? Mm -hmm. OK. So the backpack that she has here, thank you much. This was uh, one of the smallest ones I could find uh, for her when she was just starting out, a little 18 liter. And uh, this backpack was really nice uh, for her to start out with and not have a like book bag type of backpack that you use for school. Uh, comfortable shoulder pads that have a curve to them so they stay on the body and they don't want to fall off very easily. Uh, there's multiple points to tie things down on, loops here, daisy chains on here as well as several mesh pockets on the side, front, the side again to dry things out. Uh, and spots here for a hydration hose, hydration port, a little hydration sleeve. But 18 liters is not a very big pack. And that's a good thing because we don't want to have too much weight on our kids when they're out in the backcountry with us. One of the things that kids are more sensitive to than adults is comfort. So if we make it uncomfortable for them to be out there in the backcountry, they're not going to want to do it. But if they can enjoy it and they can have fun out there with it and not have their shoulders hurting or their back hurting, then they're more likely to keep wanting to go out there with you and do it. So this isn't a commercial for this backpack. It was a good backpack uh, for her. She has outgrown it now and no longer fits. But at age six, uh, this was a great backpack because it held a couple of essentials and it wasn't too heavy for her. Uh, there is the 25% rule that people talk about. Um, you read Backpacker Magazine or several other outdoor activity magazines or books out there, and they'll probably touch around the 25 to 30% rule as well, which is 25% of your body weight should be the max weight for your pack. So at the age of six, I think she was 50 pounds, and that is right about 12 pounds of pack weight. So if we throw a water bladder in here, which I think everybody should carry their own water, I am a big fan of the bladders. This happened to be a camelback bladder. But I'm a big fan of the bladders. And for her, at six years old, I have her carry a one liter. This is a three liter, but we're going to pretend for now because I don't have a one liter handy. So I throw a one liter in here. One liter of water would weigh uh, right about three pounds, maybe two pounds. Yeah, a little more than two pounds. So we throw that in here in the pack, fill it up. We'll run the hydration port out of here like it's supposed to be ran. And come down one of the shoulder straps here. So you get the hydration pack in there. We take her tent, or sorry, not her tent, uh, her sleeping bag, throw her sleeping bag in there. And as you notice, sleeping bag and water, that is pretty much the pack. The only other thing that she insisted on carrying when she was six years old was a stuffed animal. So we packed that in there as well. Zip this up and with the sleeping bag, the stuffed animal, and the water, this pack would be probably right around seven pounds maybe. So great little weight for her. It's pretty full, so it's taken a lot of bulk that would normally be in a, a parent's backpack. It's taken that out and it's having her carry that. So now she's carrying some of her own gear um, the big fluffy stuff too, it doesn't compress very well into our packs. We have more room for the heavier equipment for the group. Uh, it also makes her feel like she's contributing to the group now too. So she's not just feeling like mom and dad are doing everything for her, but this is an adventure that she is on, not just an adventure that she's kind of watching on the sidelines. So that's how we pack a little pack for her. Uh, and that's really all she should carry. I don't think that um, most children should carry food in their backpack. Uh, especially if you go places like we go where there's uh, bears or other animals that might be interested in stuff that smells good, you don't want um, the food or the packaging to be mismanaged. So you definitely want to make sure that you're taking care of that and it's probably in like a group uh, food bag that you can hang up at night 
and not have to worry about uh, critters getting into your tent or into your backpack while you're sleeping and uh, making a mess of things. So next we'll talk about the, uh, the bigger backpack she has that she's 10 now. All right, next we'll talk about what it takes to pack a backpack for a older child. Uh, like I said, my daughter is 10 years old now, uh, just shy of 90 pounds. So if we go with the 25% rule, that means that this pack is no more than about 22 pounds of weight, uh, which is good because again, mostly essential gear for her, but there's gonna be a couple of group things she's gonna carry with her well, as well now too. Uh, first off, we're going to pack her sleeping bag again. So she's upgraded to a sleeping bag too. We'll talk about that in a different video. So this backpack is uh, much more feature rich than a smaller one. Uh, this is a 40 liter. Uh, we have standard attachments here for daisy chains like we had before. Um, this one I think they're gonna be a little more adventurous kids outdoors. So now we have an ice axe loop, uh, which my daughter is looking much forward to doing some winter activities with me here soon. But we have an ice axe loop for this. Uh, we have other compression straps and tie down straps on this bag as well. She can carry tent poles in this now because she has a sleeve over here with a strap. So there's more stuff that she can carry for the group besides her own gear. Um, once again, I think that we're gonna be packing uh, essentials that she's gonna carry, uh, which is water, her sleeping bag, but now we're also going to graduate from the water here too, into the hydration sleeve, is she's gonna carry her own uh, rain gear. So she has rain pants, rain jacket, and we're gonna stick that in the hood. And the reason that goes in the hood is that it's quick access. So we wanna make sure that if she needs that stuff and it starts to rain really suddenly, that it is easy to get to, and we're not having to hunt for it inside the bag. So we'll put that in there. Now we're also going to pack a headlamp for her. And then, if she has room in her pack, I really recommend, especially in colder weather, that we pack a inflatable pad as well as a closed cell foam pad. Now the inflatable pad uh, is absolutely useless if it gets a hole in it, and that's really dangerous. We don't want to have a pad, this be our only pad out there, and then something happen where this is no longer effective to keep us warm. Because the pad's main purpose is not comfort, but it's to keep us warm off the ground. So I always recommend that we have a closed cell pad at a minimum. So here's a closed cell rolled pad, uh, but an R value of two for the insulation value. And then this inflatable one here, it has an R value of about three. Uh, the main purpose of stacking them is twofold. One, comfort, because you do have more squish now, so it's gonna be more comfortable on the ground. And the other benefit is that the R values are cumulative. So we have two here and three here, we're gonna have five total for how much insulation value we have from the ground. So we're gonna throw that in there. And then other thing that she would carry now too, because she's a little, a little bit bigger, we're gonna have her carry the water filter for the group. Uh, now this is a, a big morale booster for our, a child as well because now they're, they're carrying group gear that the whole group needs to actually function. So it's important that uh, she knows she's carrying this too. That way she's gonna feel like she's really contributing to the group when they go out in the backcountry. We throw a water filter in there, probably a couple changes of clothes. And then her pack's gonna be pretty full at that point. So we'll just go ahead and close up the straps here. Now, one thing you'll notice on this pack is that there are no straps on the bottom where you would normally put one of these on an adult pack. So we have to make do a little bit with that, which isn't a bad thing because having this thing on the bottom here makes this pack really wide for someone who's so small. So we're gonna actually strap it right across the top here using those daisy chains. And to do that, we're gonna use two loops on a cord and do what's called a trucker's hitch. So we have cordage here. We have one loop, two loop, have a bowlin and a butterfly loop I tied on this. And then just a long length of cord. We're gonna run that through daisy chain so we have a loop on both sides. And then we're gonna put this on top, come through, pull it through the first loop, and then we're going to rotate this around a little bit so we can get to the other loop pretty easy here and make it show on top. So here's the top loop. We're gonna go through this once and then we're gonna go through it again. And having to go through there again, it's basically gonna pinch that cord and pull it down tight. So doing that a couple times, this uh, thermo rest 
is squishy and it has the tension pushing back up. So having that tension push back up against this, this uh, loop we just put in here will keep this nicely secured to this without having to tie a knot or trying to mess with a, uh, a bow loop knot or like a shoe tie knot that we would normally tie that never we can get right under tension. So doing it this way, um, it makes it really quick to take apart too. Uh, there's two ways to do this. You can come in here and pinch it and kind of just slide the knot. Or if we have enough space here on the loop, we can also feed it back. This one, we don't quite have enough to feed it back in there. But there are lots of uses for this hitch, this trucker's hitch, uh, to be able to tie down gear and make it so that it is fairly easy to untie once it's tied down. So just work this knot loose a little bit here. Just like that, and the whole thing comes out. So whether you're going out into the back country for an overnight or several days, uh, I really recommend that we have the pack packs packed very similar for both children. Um, we, for the younger ones, we have a small pack just with their critical essentials and their stuffed animal. And for the larger pack, we will have uh, some more group gear in here as well. And just to show how well this fits, I want to have my uh, daughter come back over here and put this on and show you what it looks like on her. And she's about four foot ten, and go on. She's about four foot ten and almost ninety pounds. And this is the forty liter backpack. So, pack on, put the hip belt on. She'll tighten the hip belt down first. And then she'll pull the shoulder strap cords back on both sides, get those nice and snug. Kind of hidden. Can't find it. Oh, that's because it's twisted up there. There you go. And the last one she'll do is the sternum strap after she gets her hair out of the way. I've tried to talk her into numerous times into getting a pixie cut. And she's like, no, dad, not a pixie cut. Anything but that. Right, Kylie? Yep. All right, so there you go. Um, go ahead and do a whole turnaround. There's a 40 liter pack. Uh, and with water in there, this would probably weigh about uh, 17, 18 pounds with everything that we had in there. Group gear, this pad was still on it, uh, as well as the extra inflatable, her sleeping bag. And that's it. Thanks again for uh, tuning in for an episode of Adventure Widely. Uh, hopefully, if you like this video, you'll subscribe to this, and I'll continue to make more great content. Uh, keep adventuring. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. One more thing. I have a gear list that I have on my website under the Resources tab. And the gear list is for my cold weather backpacking list. It's a gear list I put together for my personal use. I thought I would share it in case it was helpful for anybody out there. It is uh, in a PDF format, but it is things that I try to remember to bring with me or give me ideas of what I might need to bring, uh, depending on where I'm gonna go. So every trip is different, and I do not take every piece of gear on this every time I go anywhere. Uh, sometimes I take more, sometimes I take less, and I take other things that are similar to this, but it's a good starting point for myself, so I know what I'm taking, and I have it out there on my website. Go check it out, please.